variables of principal interest, your independent variable and your dependent variable, you need to regress them onto your, co your covariate or whatever it is that you want to control. All right, and that's also known as a covariate. So how do I do that? I go into regression, linear, and I put IQ in my dependent, and I put socioeconomic status in my independent. And then I want to save the residuals, and I'm just going to save the unstandardized. You can choose whichever you want, which, uh, but the unstandardized is the one I'm choosing this time. So that's going to create a variable. And it's called, uh, by default, res1, but I'm going to put it as IQ residual. All right, and I'm going to get rid of this label. Now, I also need it for academic achievement. So I'm going to go into regression, linear, and put um, academic achievement as my dependent variable. So I'm regressing academic achievement on socioeconomic status, and I'm going to save the academic achievement residuals as a variable as well. Okay, so now that's IQ residual, and I'm going to put that AA residual. I'm going to get rid of that. Now, what do you think the correlation would be? Just the Pearson correlation between IQ residual and AA residual? Well, if you think it's going to come out to being exactly the same thing as the partial correlation, you'd be right. And I'll show you that. 0.542. That's what the partial correlation is, in fact, doing. It's the residuals, what's left over from uh, the co covariate variable, your controlling variable, correlated together. So in some sense, you can simply view a partial correlation, which a lot of people have a hard time understanding, is simply a Pearson correlation on the residuals. If you understand what residuals are, um, you know what a partial correlation is. Maybe I'll have to make a video on exactly what residuals are. I did talk about residuals in some depth in the multiple regression uh, tutorial, so you should check that out. Uh, now I can. Now that I've got the two variables, I can actually graph my partial correlation. We should always take a look at our scatter plots and correlations, especially if we're interested in the possibility of nonlinear associations. So I'm going to click on OK. And this is what the scatter plot of that partial correlation looks at. Now look how this partial correlation looks much more like a bird's nest, even though there's still a pretty good correlation there. We can see that it's much rounder, much less tightly held across the uh, regression line in comparison to the uh, first scatter plot depicting the 0.69 correlation. So you've got R squared of 0.479. That's the first correlation. Nice uh, correlation. Most of the items are hugging relatively closely. It's not a perfect correlation, but it's a pretty strong one. And then we get the partial scatter plot, and it's revealing greater um, error, if you will. And why is it showing greater error? Well, because the socioeconomic status variable has stripped reliable um, correlated variance between the two variables, so, and it didn't remove any of the error variance. So what you get left over is the leftover correlation plus the error variance. And that's why the correlation and the scatter plot suggest a weaker effect between the two um, variables when you control for the effects control for the effects of a third variable, which is a partial correlation analysis. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll I'll uh, catch you next time.